excited to be worshiping with you online today and happy Valentine's Day. As we begin uh, worship today, I wanted to start with a verse from Psalms about the love of God. So this is Psalm 136 verse one. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. God's faithful love endures forever. And that is what causes us to worship, what causes us to give thanks. So let's have a great Sunday worshiping God and giving thanks to him for his faithful love. Amen, amen, Cross Church. Good morning, Cross Church. Happy Valentine's Day. We hope you're staying warm. We want you to stand up off your beds, off your couches, and let's chase after God's love. Praising my way through I'm praying 
worshiping this morning, this morning during this season of love. I am so glad we can celebrate the Lord whose love never fails. Higher than the mountains that I face, stronger than the power of the trial and the change one thing remains one thing remains your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. thank you so much for your incredible love for us. God, we thank you that your love never fails us, that it is always there, that it is never ending and it never runs dry. God, we thank you that you are here with us, that you are able to connect us to one another. God, I pray for this morning that, that we would worship you, that we would honor you, uh, not just today, but with our whole lives. And pray that you would continue to bless us, to grow us, to make us more like your son, Jesus. It's in his incredible name that we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Well, uh, welcome to Cross Church again. We're so glad that you all are joining us online, and we're especially glad if you are uh, new with us today, just checking us out online. We're glad that you're here. I'd love for everybody uh, in the comments to just welcome those of us who are maybe new or watching for the first time. And if that is you, we'd love to connect with you. So what you can do is you can text our church phone number, which will come up on your screen, uh, just that word connect. And we'd love to get more information uh, about you and be able to, to connect with you and see how we can serve you and help you grow in your faith. We here at Cross Church are a church that is all about loving God and loving people. And uh, wanna, I want to talk to this morning about one of the ways that we do that as a church, one of the major ways that we do that, and that is through our groups ministry. And so uh, we believe that our, our growth happens in relationship and that these, uh, these circles that we have of people are really important for our growth and really important for our ability to both love one another and to love God. So I'm really excited that we're uh, continuing our groups for this semester. We're gonna, uh, we took a break for winter, but we're about to restart next week. And you can go ahead and sign up right now. If you text uh, that same church number that should come up on your screen, the word groups, you'll get an opportunity to sign up or you can go onto our website and sign up for, on our groups page there. We'd love you to do that this week. Those will start uh, next week on the 21st. That week uh, we'll have lots of different groups, some online, some in person. So we'd really love for you all to be a part of those. Uh, now as we continue in our service, we're going into a time of giving. We believe that God has, has given us so much in his love. Uh, he's poured out his love on us lavishly. And so we want to respond by giving back to him, by worshiping him through giving. And so you can do that here at Cross Church in a few ways. You can give online at our website. You can text to give. We have an option for that. And you can also give through Cash App. So uh, let's take a moment right now and worship God in our giving uh, as well. Now I'm excited for us to continue our Love Connection series. This month, in the month of February, we're talking all about God's love and the love of Jesus and how it's connecting us to him and to each other. So I'm excited for PV to come and for us to continue talking about God's love. Good morning, Cross Church family, and once again, uh, we're excited to be able uh, to worship with you online this morning. We hope, as TJ mentioned, that you guys are safe and warm, and uh, we're excited to jump into uh, week number two of this series entitled Love Connection. If this is your first time connecting with us. I'm Pastor Vincent. They also call me a PV, and I'm glad that you are here uh, online with us this morning. Uh, today is Valentine's Day, and and what a great day uh, to be talking about love. And so uh, TJ kicked this sermon series off last week, and uh, we had a little graphic that uh, was a triangle that really, uh, really expressed to us what love is all about, how uh, God loves us and he loves others, how uh, we are to love God and we are to love others as well. And at the center of all of that is Jesus Christ, because he is the expression of love. And TJ last week talked about uh, seeing love, how we can see God's love for us. And so uh, today, uh, what I want to look at is the, the subject of the significance of love. Uh, last week, we talked about seeing love. Today, we want to talk about knowing love, the significance of love. Now, today, I got, I got a bunch of scriptures um, because we're going to look at um, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians, and we're going to look at chapters 12, 13, and 14. Paul does an amazing thing in these three chapters to really talk to us about love. Um, you know, many of us are familiar with Tina Turner, and uh, she had a, a song that she uh, sung and, and asked a famous question that, that most of us have asked somewhere in our lives. She simply asked, what does love got to do with it? 
And Tina, as she as she sung that song, she went through and she said, a love is simply just a secondhand emotion. She said, what does love got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? And friends, from our perspective, love is viewed as simply just an emotion, one that we choose to uh, to exercise, and sometimes we choose not to exercise. And love for us is is the expression of of especially at Valentine's, the giving of gifts and the giving of flowers. Maybe there's a diamond ring or candy, whatever it is that you like. We see love as an expression of something that's been given to us, and a Many of us simply only see love as a word, something that we just say, but so too often we don't really mean. But friends, the truth of, of love has nothing to do with any of those things, nothing to do with emotion, nothing to do with, with gifts, tangible gifts that we receive, nothing to do with, with just saying it with our mouths. True love is the very nature of God, and love is a spiritual byproduct of a deep an abiding relationship with him. We can't know love unless we know God. For God, as the word tells us, is love. And just like Tina Turner, we have become numb to love because of the experiences of our lives, because of the things that have happened to us, because of the heartache uh, that we may have experienced. Maybe we have had our bro hearts broken. We have become numb to love, and, and we decided that love is no longer important to us. Maybe, maybe we, we've, we've gone so far to choose to live a life that's disconnected from God, and, and maybe we've disconnected ourselves from others around us. And in, in this book of Corinthians, Paul uh, writes to a, a group of Christians uh, that live in a society much like ours, a society that is affluent, a society that has lots of stuff, a society that has plenty of distractions, a society where, where everybody wants to indulge in what makes them feel good, an, an environment ultimately that's focused on me, myself, and I. Sounds familiar to us today. And, and Paul uh, uh, teaches uh, th this group of Christians not only what it means to live for Christ, but the significance of love. Paul, in, in chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 12, he, he talks about that the kingdom of God should be focused on God and focused on others. And, and he teaches about how, how the church should be a, a, a representation of Christ Jesus, that we are, we are all a part of one body and, and all of us are unique, but, but it takes all of us to make God's kingdom grow in this world. He even talks about how, the, how the God gives us gifts. He gives us abilities, things that only are unique to us so that we can make the church great. But it's at the end of, of chapter 12 that I saw something that I never really paid attention before. Because it's at the end of verse 12 that Paul makes an amazing statement to us about love. 1 Corinthians 12 and 31 says this, so you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts, but now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. Paul simply is saying to us this morning, my first point, is that love is the best way to live. That love is the best way to live. In other words, Paul says if you want to live a good life, you need love. Now, we, we all know the song. We, we've all said it ourselves. I'm living my best life. And typically, when we talk about living our best life, we're talking about pleasing and pleasing ourselves. We're, we're talking about what are the things that, that we are doing that bring us satisfaction. We go on a vacation. We say, man, I'm at the beach. I'm living my best life. Uh, maybe we achieve a goal or some level of success, and what do we say, man, right now I'm living my best life. Maybe, maybe we get a new car or, an, or a new home or we get a raise on our jobs, and we're saying, guess what? I'm living my best life. Friends, the pursuit of things in this world 
And Paul even says, the pursuit of even serving God and expiring after his gifts uh, are, are great things, but they don't mean anything without love. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. For Paul says, he says that, let me show you, let me show you the best way to live. And then 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, he says, If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but did not love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. He said, if, if I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but did not have love for others, I would be nothing. He said, he said, if I give everything I have to the poor and even sacrifice my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I will have gained nothing. Friends, Paul is asking an important question of us today. He is saying, what is your motivation for what you do? What motivates you? What, what drives you to do the things that you do in your life and even the things that you say you do for God? Why do you serve? Why do you, why do you give? Why, why do you do what you do? Why do you aspire for the things that you aspire for? Are you motivated because you believe that there is an, a, a reward or maybe a pat on the back or an acknowledgement to be gained? Or are we doing what we do out of the motivation of the love for the one who created us, the one who saved us, and the one who called us to love others as we love ourselves. At Cross Church, our motivation for everything we do is simply because we love God and we love people. It's not a motto, it's, it's not a cool tagline, it's not just a vision statement, but we have decided that this is the best way to live according to God. But friends, I have to be honest, sometimes I have to even check my own motives as a pastor. Sometimes I have to check my motives that, that am I only wanting to succeed or, or to gain? Or am I only wanting our attendance to grow or, or for us to expand our facilities or for us to do things in the community because I want acknowledgement or some kind of reward or, or, or am I doing it because I love God, because I love people? Friends, I believe that this is why the heart has become the symbol of love. That if you think about it, the heart is at the center of our bodies. It's responsible for, for pumping the blood through our bodies. Uh, the, the blood is, is a, a life-giving uh, substance that we all need because if we don't have it, guess what? We can no longer live. And friends, I believe that, that love should be at the center of our lives, that, that it, it pumps life into every relationship we have and should fill every part of us because without love, we can't live the best life that God has designed for us. Friends, loving God and loving others should be our preferred lifestyle of those who have been changed by Jesus Christ. So, the first reason why love is significant is because love is the best way to live. Here's the second one. The second reason why love is significant because Paul says love is the greatest. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 13, we jump to the end. Paul says there are three things that will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. But he says, but the greatest of these is love. In other words, what Paul is saying is love is the goat. Love is the greatest of all time. Now, we like to debate who's the goat in, ath in athletics, right? Is it, is it Michael or LeBron? Is it, is it Montana or, or Brady? We like to debate who is the greatest of all time, but Paul says when it comes to, to, to this life and when it comes to eternity, there is no debate. Love is the goat. Now, I know what you're saying. PV, wait a minute. How is that possible? 
The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. I got to have faith. That's got to be the greatest. The Bible tells me that hope is the confidence that we have uh, to trust God's word and, and, and to, that God will keep his promises. Hope's got to be the greatest. How is it possible for love to be greater than hope and faith? Well, friends, it's possible because love is the foundation of your faith. It is the summary of what you hope and believe in. In other words, love is the greatest because without love, there is nothing to have faith or to hope in. Friends, love is the most valuable thing that we possess. It's the most valuable thing that, that we all have. But because, because it was love that caused God to create us even though he didn't need us. It was love that, 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 that God was willing to give Jesus Christ to die for us even though we did not even deserve it. It was love of God that, that he loves us without expectations or conditions or judgments or requirements. His love is, a, is available to all of us and is free to all of us. He doesn't withhold it. He doesn't hold it back. Friends, God loves us as we are not as we should be. God love breaks down all the fears and all of our defense mechanism. It, it removes the need for us to, to have to appear as if we have it all together. And it's because of love, uh, his love, that I can love me. It's because of his love that I know and you know that we are valuable, that we are worthy, that we are enough. We don't need anything or, or anyone else to, to validate us because the love of God is forever. And friends, here's this. When we finally understand that, then it will change our attitude towards God, and it will change our view towards others. Look what it says, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. It gives us a description of, of what love is. It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or pride or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is, it is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wrong. A love, love never gives up. It, it doesn't rejoice, rather, uh, it, at the injustices of others. Love uh, rejoices uh, whenever truth went out. It never gives up. It never loses faith. It is always hopeful and enduring through every circumstances. Prophecy and speaking is unknown languages, and special gifts will become useless. But love will never fail because love is the greatest. So love is significant because, one, it's the best way to live. Love is significant because, two, it's the greatest. It's the GOAT. Here's the third one. Love is significant because love is and should be the goal. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 14. Now, think about this. 1 Corinthians 12, the end of verse 12, he tells us there's something better to life for you. He starts in 1 Corinthians 13, and he talks about the love is 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 the greatest thing because with, without it nothing really matters. And then he he says in 1 Corinthians 1 and 14 rather in 1 he says let love be your highest goal. What's the most important thing to you? What is the what is the thing that you say is the number one thing in your life? What is the thing that you say is the, the top of your priority list? What, what is your goal for life? Is it to be happy? Is it, is it to be successful, to be, to be comfortable, or to have fun? Maybe it's to retire. Maybe it's to, to get married, to have a family. Maybe it's for you to be well-known and popular. Maybe your number one goal is, is, to, is to have a certain number of, of followers on social media or get a certain number of likes on, on a particular post. I don't, I don't know what your goals are. I know every year when I think about my goals, I, I think about uh, the betterment of my family, the growth of our church, the, uh, the our financial stability, overall health. All of those things are great goals. But here's the reality. Whatever is the number one goal in your life, whatever is the number one thing that you put at the top of your priority list, that's what guides the decisions and the choices that you make in your life. It, give you an example. 
If your number one goal is to have fun, guess what? You're always going to be looking for things and ways to have fun. If your number one goal is to be comfortable, guess what? You're always going to be looking for ways to be comfortable, and you're always going to be avoiding situations that might cause you discomfort. If your number one goal is, is to be approved, then guess what? You're going to choose situations and places and people where you can get the most affirmation. Friends, Paul is saying to us today, make love your number one goal. Filter the actions and decisions of your life through the filter of love. Friends, this is why Jesus, when, when the lawyer came to him and said, what's the greatest commandment? Well, what, what's, the, what's the greatest thing, the most important thing that, that we should do as believers in God? And Jesus said, Matthew 22, he says, you must love God with all. Love your neighbor as yourself. What Jesus is saying is nothing is more important than loving God and loving others. Everything else is simply secondary. Contrary to what many people believe and think in, in our society today, that we're not here just to acquire stuff. We're not here just to, to uh, achieve uh, success or goals. We're not, we're not here just to accomplish some things because no matter what we achieve, no matter what we accomplish, no, no matter what we acquire, in the end, we can't take any of it with us. And one day, we all, as Christians, will stand before God, before Jesus. And I believe one of the questions he's going to ask all of us is this, did you love me? Did you love others? That's the question that Jesus asked of Peter. He said, Peter, do you love me? He asked him three times, Peter, do you, do you love me? And each time Jesus responded to him, and the sum, summation of that response was, if you love me, you will then care for those around you. The primary mission of us on earth is to show and to share the love of God to everyone, everywhere, and every day of our lives. Paul later says in 1 Corinthians 16 and 14, he says, do everything, not some things, not a few things, um, not the things that we choose to do, but he says, do everything in love. I know you're saying, PV, is love really that important? I mean, come on, is it, is it, is it that important? I'll tell you that it is that important because love changes things, changes situations. Most of all, love changes people. Friends, you know, me and Joy, uh, some nights we're watching television, and one particular station that we watch, they always seem to, at nighttime, uh, show the same commercial, uh, it's the SPCA commercial, I think, uh, about these dogs who have been abused, and they look so sad and, and pathetic, and they're in cages, and, and Joy hates watching that commercial because she feels so bad for those animals. And, and, and friends, if you ever adopted a, a, a pet um, from the SPC area or, or from anywhere else, a shelter dog, you know that that, that animal comes with, some, with some, some situations. They usually come uh, with some fear, some anxieties, because they have been hurt, mistreated somewhere in their life. Some of them even are, are angry. And, and, so, and so what they tell you is, is that, is that in, in order to, to, to have a relationship, you've got to pour love onto that animal. And, and, and friends, it doesn't, it doesn't, take a, it doesn't happen instantaneously. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it takes days. It takes weeks. It takes months, even years before that, before that animal begins to let down their guard, begins to, to become vulnerable, begins to trust you. And friends, before you know it, you can see the impact of love on that animal's life. They begin to change from the inside out. And friends, I would say that the same is true about us. That, that, that when we receive the love of God, that, that, that when we receive it and we accept it into our lives, it can change us in every way possible. 
No matter what our experiences have been, no matter how we've been hurt by others, God's love can heal us every time. But friends, once we've been changed, he's been he's calling us to share that love with someone else and watch it change them too. Friends, you can't heal hatred with hatred. Hatred only begats more hatred. Friends, if you want to see a heart fill with hate change, begin to love. You want to see a, a life filled with anger change, start loving. You want to see a, a life filled with fear and anxiety, consumed with guilt and consumed with hopelessness. They need love because love is the only thing that can change us from the inside out. So as I close, love is significant. Tina Turner wrote this song because, because she had had some negative experiences in her life. And she had been through some things. And, and because of that, she was wondering, really, what does love have to do with it? And friends, maybe, just maybe, you've had some bad experiences in your life. Maybe, maybe you, you have felt unloved at some point in your life. Maybe you've gotten to the point that you don't even care about love anymore, and you're asking the same question that she asked, what does love have to do with it? Friends, I'm here to tell you, Paul says from God that God's love has everything to do with it because it's the best way to live. God's love is the greatest of all time. God's love is and should be the goal of every one of our lives. Father God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the love of your son, Jesus. And we thank you, God, that Paul shows us in 1 Corinthians how that even as believers, we can pursue all the gifts that you have for us, that we can be serving you, we can be living for you, we can be doing all of these things for you if we have not received your love it will all be for nothing and God I pray that someone now is, is hearing my voice and they're struggling with something in their life they're, they're struggling with relationship they're struggling because they don't have a genuine relationship with you and I pray, God, right now that you open their hearts. And God, that you will flood it with your love and that you will begin the healing process for them. We thank you and we love you. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Friends, today, God is asking you to be his valentine. He's saying, I, I want to be the one to show you love today. I want to be the one that, 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 that pours my love out on you. Friends, maybe, maybe, maybe you've had some bad experiences as I said before. God is saying, all you have to do is accept my love. Receive my love. Allow my love to change you from the inside out and then begin to share it with someone else. So as we take this time for decision, you'll see the slide that comes up to take your next step. All you simply have to do is just, is just connect with us and, and text the word connect to, to the number that's on the screen. And friends, when you, you get a reply and, and you'll get a form and, and you just share with us how you want to take the next step and what that next step is. Maybe you want to be saved, baptized. Maybe you want to become a part of the family. Maybe you simply just need prayer. Don't miss this opportunity as the praise team sings to make a decision, the right decision that God is calling you to make in your life. Grander earth was quick before Moved by the sound of his voice And seas that are shaken and stirred 
overcome and broken for my regard. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are Thank you so much for joining us this morning uh, here at Cross Church. Uh, as we go, I want to remind uh, you that uh, you can go ahead and reserve your seat for next week in person if you text the word reserve to our church number. We'd love to see you there. Uh, hopefully we'll have better weather uh, then. And uh, I also want to remind our kids that you can join us after service for our Cross Kids Zoom. Uh, what a great message PB gave this morning. I love 1 Corinthians 13, particularly that uh, phrase that love never gives up. I'm so thankful that God's love has not given up on me. I pray that you would be thankful for that as well and that you would live this week in light of that truth that God's love has not given up on you and your love ought not give up on others either. So we'll see you next week. Uh, great to see you this morning, Cross Church.